Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plots, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. Winter may be cold, but you can still enjoy seasonal color. Today we are planting winter annuals. Also, want to grow vegetables through the winter? Try garlic. That's just ahead on the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to the Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Joellen Diamond. Joellen is the Director of Landscape at the University of Memphis, and Lucas Holman will be joining me later. Hi, Joellen. Yay. I always like doing this, right? Yes. Switching out the bed, Switching right, out, for the yes. season. Yeah. So what are we going to do this on? Well, we, you look at what we did. The pink uh, begonias look great with the, the, the white Dusty Miller. Oh, yeah. And then our hibiscus, we've got a mixed bag here. Some of them did good, some of them didn't. Uh, not so you know, much. if you're wanting something for, for you know, to to uh, be consistent, this would not be a good plant to replant back here. Okay. So we'll just keep that in mind. Um, Dusty Miller has been here for three years. It has done so well. And you know well. what? Uh oh, don't say it. I'm tired of it. Yeah, so we're going to do something completely different because it, oh it really, I mean, I want to put, I want to plant bulbs okay. and have a great show of bulbs. We can't do that with the Dusty Miller. Right. So we're going to dig <laughs> up the Dusty Miller and we can always plant it somewhere else or put it in the compost pile. Wow, you know how that makes me feel, right? Well, this is always tough for me. Yeah. All right. But it has to be done. Has to be done. It's the time of year. All right. Now, we're lucky because not all parts of the country can uh, have winter annuals. So we're lucky. Wow, they did so well. Nice root system there. How about that? So, Jordan, what do you think about the soil? Well, it still looks pretty good and nicely amended. But we do need to dig it up and kind of loosen it up because we're going to put bulbs in it. How deep do we need to go? Oh, six inches would be good. Seeing some worms, which is good. It's good. It's come a long way. I think when we first started, we didn't see any. Yeah, that's worms. right. We haven't done this in a couple of years. So actually, probably since we planted the Dusty Miller, it's time to Turn over, get some of these clods incorporated into the nice organic matter we have. Well, it looks like we have some daffodil bulbs here. Yeah. We planted these last year. Okay. And they're looking really good. Um, but when we find them, we'll dig them up and we'll, we'll plant them all in, in, a, in another place. Okay. What I'll do is I'll take a garden rake and kind of shape our bed, even out some of these clods. Oh, that was a bulb right there. So you think uh, pulling up those roots from the tree will hurt it? Oh, no. Yeah. It's got plenty of them in there. It's probably coming to this area uh, because we have well amended it and we fertilize it all the time. So it's seeking good soil, just like we want to have in this bed. So yeah. it benefits that tree as well. All right, now that we've shaped the bed, all right. we gotta plant our, our bulbs. Okay. I've got some bone meal, which is fertilizer. It's really good for bulbs. Okay. And I think bone meal is what phosphorus. It's got a lot of phosphorus in it. It does yeah. have some other uh, nitrogen and potassium, but mostly phosphorus yeah. for root growth. And what I'll simply do is sprinkle it on the ground. When we plant the bulbs, it'll get in the ground with the bulbs. It almost looks like sawdust. Mm-hmm. What that? This will be just fine. Okay. 
didn't take a whole lot. And we ah. have Darwin hybrid tulips. Okay. Red. And we will be planting them. All right, so how deep do they need to be planted? Well, because we've dug this up, we don't need to use a bulb planter. We'll just use our trowels. Mm. And we the, here in the Mid-South, we don't necessarily need them quite six inches, but we'll get close to six okay. inches. Remember, we're gonna have uh, pansies on top of them. We always plant the bulbs first and then plant pansies on top. Okay. When we're planting these, there's a, there's a pointed side Good that deal. goes up Good and the root flat side that goes down. So we gotta plant Always them. Always good to know. I'll plant them with the point up. That way they won't waste energy. Okay. I will set them out and then you can start right. planting them. Okay. And we're gonna try for about five inches, right? About five try? inches. Okay. And if you look at your trowel, yes. some trowels have measurements on them. And these are, this has a measurement of four inches, so an inch above that, so it's about to the handle. Yeah, so. sounds about the same. Yeah, about the same. And I'm putting them out in three rows in a triangular pattern, so they'll be somewhat evenly spaced. Now we have some daffodils left. There's several clumps of them. We'll put them at the back here. Space them out. So about the same depth? Yes, or, the okay. same depth. Now we've got all of the bulbs planted and we're ready to plant pansies. But we're gonna put down some fertilizer for them for the winter. And this is a slow release fertilizer. It should last most of the winter. And we just sprinkle this on the ground. All right. Very good. Very good. Now, Next, we'll put down our mulch. Okay. We don't need a whole lot because there's a lot of organic matter in here. We're just trying to keep the weeds down. Okay. And what I'd simply do is spread it out. All right. Now we're ready to plant our pansies. We've got three colors. We've got red tulips, and then we've got two types of blue pansies and yellow pansies. All of our pansies have what they call faces on ah. them, which means they've got a dark spot in the middle of the pansy. Okay. There, so they look like they have a face. So they're considered pansies with blotches or faces. And we've not planted this kind of pansy before. Yeah, they're pretty. So we will mm -hmm. see how well they do. All right. Uh, we're going to mix up our colors. I don't know. I think we're going to have more than enough here. Um, we can start. Uh, I'll start with yellow down the center. Okay. okay so we're going to take the roots out, right? And we're looking at the roots, and they're mm -hmm. nicely formed in here, not too tight. A little bit perfect. I don't really, don't even really have to do anything to them. They're they're just perfect for planting. And so, how deep do we need to plant those pansies? Pansies, the crown is at the very sur top surface of this soil. If you bury that, they tend to die. Okay. So what I usually do is plant up to it and just put some mulch over the top. Gotcha. Uh, because I'd, I'd rather have them a little, little bit high than too low because the, if the crown gets buried, they die. They die, okay. And I'm planting them about six to eight inches apart. They will fill in nicely this way and cover the bed so that the weeds won't have uh, any light <laughs> to try to space. germinate. Right. Okay. Um, let's go ahead okay. and plant these. Plant okay. And then we'll start another row. All right. And we just push the mulch aside 
and dig our hole. The last of those. Yeah, got a nice row of yellow. Yeah. Uh, and you notice when we dug and planted them, you didn't uh, get in into any of the bulbs we I planted, sure did you? I sure no, because these are not that deep. Yes, you did. All right, now we're going to use these dark blue ones that there is a nice bumblebee <laughs> partaking of. Oh, nice. I'm going to do a little pattern with these. Okay. Let me, uh, I can go ahead and I'm gonna put in some of these okay. now. Okay. And we can start planting. Start planting, yeah. I think we have room to put one more row of yellow out front. All right, there it goes. All right, Joel. Very good. Well, I guess we'll get a broom and sweep the edge to get the dirt off the sidewalk, and we will water them because yes. it's been it is dry. All right, Joel. It looks beautiful. Thank you. We always appreciate uh, you doing our fall colors for us. I can't fall wait to see winter. the yeah. I can't wait to see the tulips in the spring. I can't wait either. So that's going to be a pleasant surprise, isn't it? Going to be a real good surprise. All right. Well, thank you much. Can't wait to see what it looks like. You're welcome. Not all bugs are bad. This happens to be one of our beneficials in the garden. This is the larva of a lady beetle. The lady beetle actually helps us out. She actually eats aphids. So anytime that you see a larva of a lady beetle, leave it be. Actually in there doing some good stuff for us. Again, eating those bad bugs, which would be your aphids. A friend to the garden. So be cautious when you're out there spraying because this one, you want to save. You want to keep it. All right, Lucas, let's talk a little bit about garlic, because I understand you really <laughs> like garlic, don't you? Love it. Uh -huh. How yeah. much do you love it? Um, it's basically used as a condiment in my household now. Okay, so, so you do love it. Every night. <laughs> every night. Yeah. All right, well, look, let's talk about some good garlic cultivars, okay? Tennessee is a great line because we can grow either soft neck or hard neck cultivars. Okay. And if we were kind of discussing the difference between the two, soft neck cultivars of garlic need to be grown in Louisiana, Florida, Texas, some of the more warmer regions. Now, hard neck need to be grown above kind of zone seven. So Tennessee is mm. basically right on the line for being able to grow both. Some of my favorite ones that I've grown over the past few years, my favorite one is kind of pictured all over the table here is Purple Glazer. <laughs> uh -huh. It's a hard neck variety of garlic. The only problem with hard neck varieties of garlic is that they don't last long in storage. Okay. So a lot of the ones we get commercially at the store, they're all soft neck because they'll last in storage upwards of a year. Hard neck cultivars of garlic will last only about five to six months. So by the time I get around to November, I'll usually, whatever's left over, put it back into the ground. Okay. Some other ones that people really like around here are chestnut red. Mm -hmm. um, and one that I really like this year that's pretty warm whenever it's eaten raw is called Bogatier. Bogatier. So you'll see mm -hmm. a lot of different heirlooms and a lot of different companies selling all sorts of different kinds. And I would hate to take a guess at how many cultivars there are. Uh, available today, but there are quite a few and Tennessee's blessed that we can grow any of them. So. Oh, so that's a good deal. Yep. Now let's tell the people what's the difference though, hard neck and soft neck. Why do we call them hard or soft neck? All right, kind of showing right here, hard okay. neck actually develops a flower. So down the center of the bulb, you'll actually have a flower. It'll pull up and twist. Okay. Most people who are growing it break off that flower because it sends more energy to make a bigger right. bulb. And we're growing okay. garlic just for the bulb. Right. We don't I'm not a huge fan of the flower to begin with. <laughs> All right. We want more garlic. That's right. So the soft neck cultivars don't develop a flower. So you actually, if you cut them diagonally kind of across the bulb, you'll see that a hard neck has a long stem down the middle and all the ones that we get commercially at the store have no uh, kind of stem down the center of the bulb okay. so they don't develop a flower. So that's the main difference between hard neck and soft neck cultivars. One develops a flower, which is the hard neck, okay. and soft okay. neck does not develop it. Good stuff, good yep. stuff. All right, now, how do we properly plant these garlic, though? All right, this is one of those crops that's so easy to grow. Is it easy? 
Oh, oh you wouldn't like believe easy. it. Oh, like easy. I think more people need to grow it because I, right. whenever people ask me, I want to start a garden, they never ask me, I want a high maintenance garden. What can I grow? <laughs> right. You're right. They want low maintenance type right. things to grow. That's right. And I think at the top of the list is garlic. Okay. So if we're doing this because really, there's really not any pest diseases. That's nothing good. really eats it. That's good. It has rare diseases, so really nothing bothers it to begin with. If you really can't grow this, you probably shouldn't be gardening to the, to begin with, actually. <laughs> All right. Um, the proper planting in Tennessee, we need to plant it about October to November. Typically, okay. and I'm actually near Nashville, I like to plant it about the first weekend of November. Okay. So you'll actually see it develop kind of a green stem through winter, frost, snow, anything throughout the winter time, and it will still do fine. Oh, that's good. So about the first weekend of November, the last week weekend of October is a, an excellent time to plant garlic in Tennessee. Okay. pH range, uh, does that matter? It likes it a little bit slightly acidic, so if you read some of the research on it, if you can get it 5.8 to wow. 6, okay. it'll do fine actually, but most Tennessee soils are very fine sure. uh, for growing garlic. Okay, now here's another question somebody may be thinking, what about fertilizer or organic matter, compost, or, or what oh, would you recommend using? Anytime organic matter you can add to the soil is fantastic, and I think it always helps out with aeration. Sure. Because what we're trying to do on this is we're trying to get root growth in the winter time. So typically when someone asks me, what do I need to fertilize it with? Most Tennessee soils have phosphorus and potassium mm -hmm. already in it. But the only thing we need to add is nitrogen. But if we add too much nitrogen, we're going to get beautiful foliage uh -huh. and no bulbs. No bulbs right. So typically, whenever someone asks me, it's usually about a half a pound per 100 square feet okay. of just nitrogen. So phosphorus and potassium are typically there, but a soil test is the best way to there tell you what you got in your ground to begin with. That's right. So that would be the best way. And you do not fertilize after April because May and June is when we're focusing on bulbs. If we fertilize with a lot of nitrogen, we're gonna get all this excess growth, and we don't want that right. in May. We want bulb growth. <laughs> there you go, okay. All right, so how about harvesting? All right, what I do is I typically wait for the, the plant, the bottom few leaves to go brown. When I have five or six still green leaves on the top, that's when I dig it up because each leaf represents a shell around the bulb. Uh -huh. And okay. I want five to six shells around the bulb to last in storage. So whenever I get five to six uh, green leaves still on top of the, the plant, I dig it and I hang it in an open air barn out of the sun uh -huh. to dry. So I'll actually tie, tie them in bunches together and throw them over the rafters in the barn. <laughs> and I want wind to get all the way around okay. it. And I don't want it to be in sun. Uh, we've had some people put it in their garage and garages yeah, get really yeah. hot. It's best if you've got a back porch that's out of sun to hang it on that back porch. And, It'll keep the vampires away, too, if you have issues with that. <laughs> That's right. Hey, you can't talk about garlic without talking about vampires, right? That's exactly right. right. Hey. Everybody mentions That's it. That's right. So what about storage? So storage. We want to get these stored. Once yeah. it actually gets cured, so this is one, once it's actually been cured inside my barn, I actually go through and I cut this off, and I'll actually cut the roots off, and I will hang it around my house in little bitty netted bags because it's stored it's stored fine once it's actually dried. Your goal is to get it dried before you bring it inside your house because a lot of people's houses are really humid and if you bring it inside the house once it's been in the garden for a long time and it's still got some moisture in it, it can rot. So we always tell people before you bring it inside your house, let it completely dry or cure and then it'll last until you want to plant it or um, or eat it. <laughs> wow, so, so completely dry. It needs to be completely dry before you bring it inside because people, some people's houses are really humid, some are cooler than others, and it kind of varies in temperature and humidity. Okay. So we always say make sure this is completely dry and you can break some of the leaves to see if it's completely dry and then just cut the top off and throw it away and then um, I just think it's best to store it in little bitty netted bags, not in plastic. Not in plastic. It's not in plastic, okay. yeah. And, and why not in plastic? Because it'll rot. Because it'll it, rot. Because okay. if there's any moisture left right. in there, we want it to uh, to not rot. <laughs> right, that's yeah. right. You know, you're growing these perfect garlic. We don't want it to rot, right? <laughs> you see, right? Because we want people to grow more garlic. That's right. <laughs> okay. Now let's talk about some uh, excellent resources for there more information are, about garlic. I actually got hooked up growing garlic whenever I was working in a nursery in Cookville, and there was an er <laughs> owner there named Jay Frankenfeld, and he was really into garlic. So when I worked there, Oh, it's been years ago. He said, you need to just start growing it because I grew up in a household that was deprived of garlic. My mother <laughs> hated garlic growing okay. up, so I never had it until I moved out on my uh, own. Right. So then I, when I moved out, I discovered the flavors of garlic and really uh, enjoyed it. But, but the best book that I found is actually put out by Timber Press. This one's called The Complete Book of Garlic. And it's read by, written by Ted Meredith, but it goes through the sections of storage, cultivars, and it goes through kind of in the back section 
of all the different cultivars that he's been able to find and how they grow. So uh, it's probably 150 different cultivars That's in the right. back of this book, and it's a really good picture and description of each one that's available. And we're still discovering a lot of the heirloom varieties from wow. some families whenever they come over to the U.S. So. Wow. So there are resources about garlic. Plenty I mean, of there's resources. A lot of pages there's plenty book. of books, and this is probably my favorite book so far. Okay. Yeah. And if people want more information about garlic, they can come see you at yeah. the Wilson County Extension Office? Yes, I am the Horticulture Extension Agent in Wilson County, and Wilson County is the county directly east of Nashville, so I'm kind of in the heart of Middle Tennessee, and I've uh, lived there for a... Uh, about eight years now, and I've oh, enjoyed Middle Tennessee, but okay. uh, they can contact me if they've got any questions or concerns about their garlic. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. You have any concerns or questions about garlic? Lucas is your man. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you. All right. Appreciate that. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Well, the garden has been in the ground for uh, several years. We're seeing some nutrient deficiencies in, in the plants, so it's time to take a soil sample and to find out what's going on in the soil. Uh, to do that, you can use something like this, a soil probe, which you si simply stick in the ground and it gives you soil here and you, you can take it and put it in the bucket. Or you can take this trowel, like most people have, and you can dig in the ground. The best place to get the soil sample is about six inches down. So we'll dig in here and get a small sample in this area. And when you soil sample, you go to different places in your garden and put it in the bucket. Now we've got all of our samples and we're going to get out all of the organic matter because we don't need that in the soil sample. And then we mix all of these samples together. Mostly you need about one cup of soil. So we'll let this dry and mix it up again and then we'll send it off to our local soil lab to find the analysis of what we need. All right, here's our Q&A segment. You ready for these questions? They're real good. Yes, they are. All right, here's our first viewer email. My red top fatinia shrub has leaves that roll up and fall off. It puts out again in a different spot and the same thing happens. Is this a blight or an insect infestation? I planted them probably, get this, 35 years ago. Wow. And kept them pruned and they have been so pretty, but now they look like they're going to die. And this is Elaine on Facebook. So red top fatinia shrub, 35 years, long That's time. That's a very long time. But, but here's the thing for me, the leaves look rolled up yeah. and they fall off. And you know what I think about when I see or hear about leaves that roll up? Yes. I usually think that's an herbicide problem, yes, right? So I I'm wondering if anybody's you know, spraying any herbicides in the area, anything like that. Because again, yeah, you're gonna get leaf rolling you mm -hmm. know, from herbicide damage. Yeah, so that's and, if what I would and if it's bad enough, they'll drop off. And, they'll and then drop they'll, off. They'll, the plant's gonna right. try to sure. regenerate itself again. Um, yeah, I, I kind of would think that too. Yeah. And you know, she, we don't know if they, she actually has a, uh, a lawn service. Could, yeah, she, um, she could. Or somebody nearby, mm -hmm. or maybe she's within a mile or so of uh, agriculture fields where they are spraying. I don't know, it, it, it there's, but it is, it does sound like herbicide yeah, damage. It, it does, and of course without a picture, you know, it's kind of hard yes, to tell, uh, hard because to tell. we do know that, you know, fatinias have other problems yeah. with the intermostory of leaf spots. Leaf spots, leaf spots, right. really bad for it's them. real bad, right, but I don't know if that, you know, it doesn't cause those leaves to roll up. It no, just, it know. doesn't cause them to roll up, and it, do, and it can cause them to fall off. Right, it can to, cause them to fall off. Not, exactly to roll right. up, not to roll up, though. Okay, you're exactly right about that. They will fall off, okay, but not roll up. Mm -hmm. All right, so there you have it, Mr. Lane. Thank you for that question. All right, hope that works out for you. Here's our next viewer email. Hi guys, any idea what these are? It was strange to see them clustering around on my Japanese maple. There were no visible wounds on the tree and I couldn't find anything similar with a Google search. The bugs were gone the next day, but it was strange to see them congregating like that. Mm -hmm. And this is Daniel, All right? So Daniel. do we know what that is? Oh yes, we do. <laughs> yes. I, they. I've had them on my well, crate. I said you've had them before. Yeah, yeah I've had them on my crate. You shared a video myrtle. with me about yeah. that before. Yeah. Uh, they're bark lice. Yeah. And they don't really harm the plants. Uh, bug, I mean, uh, they're good bugs for birds and other predatory yeah. bugs to eat, uh, but they don't really hurt plants. Yeah. I don't know why they congregate like that. I don't, I don't know that much about their history, but. Yeah, they some appear, people. Yeah, appear, and then, then they, they leave. Gone. <laughs> right, yeah. And some people call them, uh, I know uh, Dr. Frank Hale would say they're herds of herds. bark lights. Yeah, herds. Yeah, because they all congregate, uh -huh. you know, together. But then, 
they're harmful. You know, he did say that they would eat like, you know, organic, you know, debris, organic matter, uh, fungi, mm -hmm. of course, lichens. I yeah. mean, that would eat, so that's actually beneficial in a yeah, sense. Yeah, that is kind of beneficial. Yeah, so I don't think they're beneficial in a sense, but other than that, they're fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're there and they go away. They're, go they're gone. They're gone. Yeah. So don't not, worry, don't not worry a problem, about Daniel. Them. It's not a problem, but thank you for the question. Nice picture. All right, so here's our next viewer email. I have two Japanese maples. They're about five years old. I have just noticed that one appears to have two rather large shoots of a different variety that must have been grafted onto the main stem. I would like to prune these different branches. What would be the best time of year to do this? Thanks. And this is Kay from right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. So it's the best time to do the pruning. Anytime. Okay. Anytime that there is some kind of growth that you don't like, you can take it off mm -hmm. um, because it just, you know, detracts and takes away nutrients from the, the plant that you That's actually right. want. So, you know, I would cut it off just any time you start seeing it. If you don't want that part of the plant to grow, then just keep cutting it off every time it starts to shoot up. Because right. you can definitely see the difference in the yes, picture. Yes, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. the two. So anytime, so you can go ahead anytime. and just you know, knock that out and mm -hmm. it's fine. Or prune that out. Okay. Yes. All right, Joy. That was fun. It was. That was fun. Thank you much. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplots at wkno.org. And the mailing address is Family Plot 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for joining us. If you want to learn more about winter flowers or growing garlic, head on over to familyplotgarden.com. We have information on this and many other garden topics. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot, grinding in the Mid-South. Be safe.